following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! This is Mick Shots, streaming live on DallasCowboys.com and the official Dallas Cowboys app. Now, here are Bill Jones, Everson Walls, and Mickey Spagnola. And here we are for a fabulous football Friday edition of Mix Shots inside the SWBC podcast studio here at the Star in Frisco. Bill Jones with Mickey Spagnola. Everson is off on this Friday. He's off. And he's off the walls on this Friday. And I remember as we clo- after we closed the show yesterday, yes. we forgot to get his picks to click and his pick for the game. I thought he said he was going to send it in. He oh, sent, that's right. He, he did say that. So, so he hadn't sent it to me. All right. We need to text him and see if he will send it to us. Uh, so we'll, perhaps we'll have that by the end of the show, 45 minutes from now. But we'll get you caught up on the Cowboys and the Cincinnati Bengals. 325 Sunday afternoon. Uh, it is what well, I guess you call a virtual Friday out here. McCarthy did have his press conference. He did. Uh, and uh, as far as the media is concerned, it's uh, no open locker room today. Now, there are players on the practice field, but it's a walkthrough scenario today. Right. And um, so we get set for Sunday. And uh, this, uh, the more I look at the game, well, kind of like last week. The more I look at the game, you say, the, "Oh, they could win. This. They could win this game." <laughs> <laughs> when they asked me today on the fan, I said, "I heard you. I take the seven points. I got this." <laughs> you did not go out on a limb and pick the Cowboys to win. I heard. Well, I, I guess that's what it turned out. Uh, well, I mean, but then after you said you'd take the points, which is seven, seven and a half, whatever, yeah, and, and, I said and then your twenty three twenty one is your prediction. But you didn't say which one. Ha- you said they would cover the Cowboys would cover the seven. Right, but I didn't say who They could have been at the 23. That's right. In cover two. And that's what I meant. Yeah, that's right. Covered with the 23. (laughs) So uh, They they may need some help, but they may help themselves. You know, one thing about it, I was looking, look at week number one in this league. I know. Even look at the Cincinnati game. Right. Look at at the quarterbacks who won in week number one who were backup quarterbacks last year. And one of them was in the Cincinnati loss to Pittsburgh. Mitchell right. Trubisky beat the Cincinnati Bengals team. Now he had a lot of help from his defense. Got it, got <laughs> with a free... five takeaways see, and that's... seven sacks. That's and, right. And a touchdown. And Geno Smith was a backup last year. And he beat the team quarterback by the guy he was backing up last year, Russell Wilson. He got right. a lot of help from his defense and, and maybe some running backs turning the ball over inside the 10-yard line. But he got help. It's a complimentary football. There was one other that I'll think about uh, that was a backup backup who won. Who ended up winning? And I had the list, but it'll come to me a little bit. But anyway, the point is, I mean, even uh, Marcus Mariota in Atlanta, who's been a backup the last couple of years, really. Okay, they're taking on New Orleans. They had a twenty-six to ten lead going to the fourth quarter. They wound up losing by one point. But there's another backup quarterback who had his team in position uh, to win the game. Well, and the guy that won the game had been a backup quarterback. And the other one was Jacoby Brissett. Right. Jacoby Brissett in Cleveland. They go on the road and they win at Carolina. So. Their backup quarterbacks can win in this league, as this one did last year at Minnesota. Sort of like uh, in baseball when they call up some pitcher from AAA and he comes up and pitches a shutout, right? Mm-hmm. Well, no one knows anything about him, and it's like, oh, that's happened a lot to the teams I watch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, 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 I just – I mean, it's somewhat dire straits just because of all the different – maneuverings you're going to have a, a guy starting his first NFL game at left guard Matt Farniak um, you got all those young guys at wide receiver but you know what they've got a game under their belt and um, maybe you got a better feel for what uh, these guys can do you know and uh, again just to use the Steelers example if the defense plays like that and keeps you in a game against a high-powered offense you never know what might take place and this is a team based on what they did last year that has the type of team that can take the football away and help an offense out. 
Yeah, and they need and they need to, and and, and more than just once, uh, I think. And you know, uh, Joe Burrow's been known to throw one to the other team now and then, and uh, so yeah, I I just, you know, the, the, it was like the season was over with after they lost that season opener, you know. And I know they lost last year and they were zero and one and came back, but. They didn't lose the way last year the way they lost this game. They gave you hope last year. It's sort of like that Texas loss to Alabama. It gave everybody hope, right? If they get their quarterback back. If they get their quarterback <laughs> back. Exactly. Same here, right? That's right. And it's just kind of the same time frame, too, at that quarterback. Yeah. Um, um, but – you know, and you look at the Thursday night game, and were you able to pull up that Thursday night game? I did. I okay. found it. You did got, find it. Good. Did, now, tell me this. Did you think that the uh, production, not the production, the, the, the visual of the game on my TV looked a lot sharper than just So you're network. a proponent of Amazon Prime I don't all the know. Time. It just looked – I thought it looked more uh, vivid, more – I don't know. The colors seemed better. <laughs> Am I just dreaming? I, I'll. You can't tell, right? I, I just. I, in fact, I was here. We taped the Mike McCarthy show last night, so I missed the first half of the game, and so I got got home in time to watch the second half. And I didn't. I'll, I'll pay attention say, next, say next what Thursday you think. night. And it maybe yeah. maybe it's just the. It, it's been a while since I've seen. Um, well, I'm trying to think. A full NFL game on, on my television, right? Because last week it was all at the stadium is what I ended up watching. Did you get a new TV? Maybe that's it. Well, but that's, it's, it's, <laughs> it's new, but it's a year old. <laughs> um, but my point on that was, all right, you know what's, what is evening the score across this league, whether no matter who your quarterback is? Right. What, what is evening the score are the lack of offensive linemen in this league. I mean, you've said it, and you, you brought the example up of the USFL and these spring leagues where they can't function on offense because right. they don't have enough offensive linemen. I've been studying the first couple of weeks of the season – offensive lines in the league and so i've got some detailed research on it oh that i'm not going to present to the audience here because it's too boring but the overall view that i have on it now and especially when you've got like for instance last night the chargers lost their all-world center Corey lindsley okay and they had to go with a backup in the second half and they have spent two first round picks the last two years on offensive linemen. Zion Johnson starting starts right. at right guard for him, their left tackle Rashawn Slater. But they could not hold the fort with Herbert. Herbert gets hurt late in that game. That evens the score. Patrick Mahomes for Kansas City. How much have they invested in their offensive line here in the last year? Well, Patrick Mahomes a lot of times is running for his life. And the dif- difference is he pulls his Houdini axe. But he's running, right? right. But even in last night's game, he's he run- only accounted for 17 points in last and, night's and game. And he's throwing the ball sidearm mm-hmm. underneath, and you're right, right, only 17 points. And then when you said, you know, Herbert got hurt, not only did he get hurt, then he got hurt worse and worse and worse because they kept hitting him. Mm-hmm. They couldn't keep him off of him. God, can you imagine? I'm, I'm sure he's got broken ribs, don't you think? There's something yeah. in there. Yep, yeah. something and, like and, that. And, and that's, not, that's no joke. Yeah. I think he did. He did fly back with the team, and so uh, which is good news for him. It's not like a, a punctured lung or something like. Yeah. That. If he had something like that going yeah, on, then right. he would not have flown. Well, uh, he wouldn't have gotten back other, in the game if he. Yeah. Yeah. And um, but um, he's got ten days for his next game. But it, obviously, that's going to be an injury that he's going to have to deal with. Um, well, he'll be having a, fl- a a better flak jacket on. Right. Right. To you. But yeah. did you see him when he was on the sideline going like this? Would I don't know if anybody could see me do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, the point is, there's a lot of really good quarterbacks in this league that are going to struggle if they don't have an offensive line in front of them. Exactly. And the point is, on this game in particular with the Cowboys and the Bengals, is and, and what helped the Steelers immensely last week 
was the second play of the game, a pick six. They get ahead. And then they get other turnovers. They are able to turn into points. And so they build a 17-3 to lead. So right. that quarterback was able to not have to do much in that game, and they had a, in, in position to win the game in overtime. If a quarterback like Trubisky or Rush or Brissett or any number of quarterbacks – if they've got to play from behind, I mean, even the Dax and the Patrick Mahomes of the world, if you got to play from, behom- from behind, <laughs> it is a whole different game. And so it is critical if the Cowboys are going to have a chance to win this game on Sunday to get ahead in this game and not well not fall behind by a couple of touchdowns. And you know, and if it's if you can find some silver lining in what happened in the first game, then and taking note of what you just pointed out. Well, Matt Fortiak, who only played, I, I think I looked it up, 23 snaps last year or 20-some, he got three quarters in. So now the, the guys that are going to be the starting five are the same starting five the Cowboys played the majority of the game uh, last week. So maybe that helps because when they were in there, they hadn't played together, right? Not in a real game. Even, even McGovern with Tyler Smith at left tackle. So maybe the the communications better. Maybe they don't miss, uh, you know, picking up the when the uh, defensive guys are looping around and playing games up there and having to pass off to your partner next to you. Maybe they'll be a little bit better at that. See what Najee Harris got against the Cincinnati uh, defense last week. Najee Harris, the Steelers running back, had ten carries for twenty three yards. Yeah, I know. I saw that. And I'm tell this this defensive front and McCarthy talked about it yesterday. Uh, I, I think it is really good. When I watched the uh, the Bengal Steelers game, I was really impressed with D, DJ Reader, their 340 pound one technique, <laughs> uh, who played 45 out of the 63 snaps in the game, and so they used him a lot. Uh, and I would assume that. Pittsburgh was going with a lot of 12 personnel then they didn't right. because they were again because they were ahead in the game and then BJ Hill their other tackle uh who had five and a half sacks last year uh but and then their defensive ends are really good players so should I go down the hallway and suggest 12 personnel maybe more than they did in the first game well I thought they were going to do that more and Ferguson played what? I thought it was 11. 14, 12 snaps? Yeah. Let me double check to make sure I saw it right. He had 11 snaps, 16% of the plays. And then two for Hendershot? Hendershot had two. Yep. Um, and, and, you know, you thought one of the things Ferguson would have been good at is blocking, right? They run at Wisconsin, uh, and they just didn't do it much. Now, the other thing – is you mentioned how well they played against the run. So you, do you want to go into the game and just bang your head against the wall and not get anywhere? Or and, and, and they need some chunk plays, and the only way to get chunk plays is to try it, right? you got to loosen that defense up because I guarantee you that Cincinnati saw what Tampa Bay did and the Cowboys were – you know, very – even though they had a couple, I call them gingerbread trays, plays. Uh, they, <laughs> gingerbread er, er, trays. Plays. Uh, <laughs> trays, too, right? Uh, everything they were throwing was underneath. You know, at some point, got to throw it down the field. You know, give me a sideline – give me a couple sideline throws down the field where – the ball is between the receiver and the sideline that my guy's the only one that's going to catch and can't get intercepted, right? Just to loosen them up and make them aware. But it, it and I think Mike pointed it out in the press conference, they were like uh, minus eight or nine on chunk plays, like meaning Tampa Bay had that many more uh, than the Cowboys did. Um, and and I think when I when I looked it up on that, Play by play, um, and they they do a deal where they give you the top t- ten plays for each team, and so it, here's how it turned out: their top ten plays, um, they were all 
he they had these are like explosion explosion one, plays two, three four five six seven they had seven plays 17 yards or more okay the Cowboys plays 17 yards or more two a 22 and a 17. They had a 48, 24, 20, uh, 19, 17, and 17. How many of those were runs? Uh, Fournette had one, two, two of them were Fournette. Okay. And then the rest were the passes. And the Cowboys' biggest play was the 22-yard one to Noah Brown. But it was in the fourth quarter, halfway through, and they were already behind. So they're not going to, you know, they were probably working and, you know, it's like, okay, just don't get behind us. And a lot of that, I think, was somewhat of a run. How, how many yards per attempt did Joe Burrow average last year throwing the ball? For the season? Yes. So I'm going to guess, I'll, I'll just take a guess, it was 8 point something. 8.9. It was nearly Almost 9 yards nine. <laughs> attempt. Yeah, right. And Jamar Chase, 18.0 yards per reception last year as a rookie. 81 catches, 1,455 yards, and 13 touchdowns. Well, and, and if, if, you, if you looked at the game, um, so Burrow, oh, they didn't do the yards per attempt in this game for some reason. What was he? Uh, it, uh, he was uh, 33 oh. for 53 in the game for 338, so I'll do it real quick here. So, you talk. Um, well, it, it ended up being only five for some reason. Well, he threw the ball 53 times. 6.4 Six yards four. per attempt. Okay. That. But still, that's not what he normally does. No, no, yeah. absolutely. Um, so anyway, um, it's it, the Cowboys are going to have their hands full with this offense. Uh, on on defense and and thus we already know the Cowboys are going to have their hands full on offense. <laughs> yeah, right. Because uh, you know, and it's fine. You know, you can say I'm running the ball and five yards, five yards, five yards. But if you don't get some chunk plays in there, that's what they need, and that's what they tried to do with those trick plays. And you know, they didn't. They they end up losing yards instead of gaining yards. But you got to do something to loosen up the defense, uh, and make them play ball and not this cozy stuff all un throwing them underneath all the time. All right, we're just getting started on this edition of uh, Mix Shots. we got to get you up to speed on the injury situation with this team headed into uh, to Sunday. Kevin in Canton, Ohio wants calls today. Oh. Mickey, do we want to take some calls sure. in this next segment? All right, we're going to open up the phone lines. one 888 Eight five five two two nine seven. Well, Did you, I get that right? You threw the rhythm off when you said the one. Yeah. Eight 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 eight, 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 eight five five two two nine seven. Eight is Troy Aikman. Yes. Five five. I will go since this is old school. Leroy Jordan. Twenty two. You go Emmett or Bob Hayes. Well, let's go Bob Hayes. You go today. Bob. Go old school. The original talking. So you got to have here. the rhythm. Yeah. Bob Hayes. I'll give you an example. <laughs> the other day I was going through the the teller, the teller for the bank, and they uh, wanted my Social Security number, the last four. Uh, and I was like, I haven't done this in a while. And I, I, screwed, <laughs> I screwed it up. I know it my whole life, right? Uh -huh. and, and, and then when I did – and then it's like, okay, well, let's do something else, right? And so <laughs> halfway through the transaction, I went through the whole number in my head uh -huh. and I got it I right. had it right? right but it was too late right? <laughs> <laughs> and the 97 is who Jason Hatcher Jason Hatcher How I was going that? Jimmy Jones all right okay or you go to Leroy Glover all right so that's the number to call and we take your phone calls when we come back here on Mix Shots we paid how much for those lessons Shh. she's doing great oh yeah totally uh can you pass me a Pepsi Zero Sugar Great job, honey! Oh. Oh, look at that. That's not the end. No way. Now it's time for the encore. You know what? You're right. Five times? Not enough times. For everyone who traded in rock concerts for their kids' recitals, you've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. That's what I like. <sighs> the Medal of Honor is our country's highest military award for valor in combat. 
More than 40 million individuals have served in the armed forces since the Civil War. Fewer than 4,000 have received the Medal of Honor. The National Medal of Honor Museum will be a place to preserve these legacies and inspire America. It's being built right next door to the Dallas Cowboys in Texas. Help us honor our country's greatest heroes. Learn more and get involved at mohmuseum.org. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I'm a broken traffic light. Stop and go is the name of my game. It's easy. You go, they go. What was it? They go, you go. <laughs> and if you have the wrong car insurance, these repair costs could stop you in your tracks. So get Allstate's new low auto rate and be better protected from mayhem like me. Not available in every state based on coverage and limits selected. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. In most states, prices vary based on how you buy. Allstate Bar and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. Star Sports Tours is the only official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, offering exclusive game weekend travel packages with pregame sideline access and photo ops with current players, cheerleaders, and cowboy legends. You want to stay at a team hotel? Attend the best tailgate party in Texas? Tour the star? and talk X's and O's with me, Everson Walls, with Star Sports Tours, you can. Visit CowboysTravel.com to book your travel package today. Back, back to Mick Shots. Cape Post Roofing and Waterproofing, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys, from corporate homes to your home. Have your roof checked by choice, not by chance. Call now. 214-225-4860, kpostcompany.com. All right, we're taking your phone calls during this segment of Mix Shots, 888-855-2297. But first, we get an injury report from Mickey. Well, I would imagine that the Cowboys will have guys out for this game, Terrell Basham. Michael Gallup, J. Ron Kearse, Connor McGovern, and Dak Prescott. So um, they're going to have to do some finagling of the 53-man roster uh, and uh, elevations from the practice squad. Mm -hmm. So my guess is because you can only elevate two guys from the practice squad, and they need two guys for sure that uh, they're going to have to put two guys on injured reserve. Because they, you need you, – there are four players that are going to have to be, in one way or the other, be elevated from the practice squad. Correct. Either being signed to the 53-man roster or using the two practice squad elevations. Right. Okay. And Mike guaranteed us today that <laughs> – uh, Cooper Rush will be on the 53-man roster. Okay, so they've got to make a roster move in order to allow for that to happen. Right. So and they, they gotta, need for another one, too. So they got to judge by who's worse off to put on the practice squad because you got to miss four games. My guess would be Basham uh, and probably J. Ron Curse. Sprained MCL, that's usually... Another thing I guess that could factor in that could be a tiebreaker on that is how are you depth-wise at a certain position right. in order to uh, be able to withstand a four-game absence. At, at, let, let's say, like with let's just use McGovern and Curse. Let's say okay. they're in that three to four-week range. We aren't sure, you know, kind of like Dak, whatever. And all right. What are your needs going forward? What's your depth at those well, positions? Well, let's put it this way. I got enough guys in the 53 to take Curse's place. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to bring somebody right. up off the practice squad to help out that with that guard lot. spot. Yeah. So I think that's probably and, – and just kind of seeing him walk around yesterday – um, and even pass rushers with the Basham situation, they they can get by uh, more easily with what they have on their fifty three at, right. at his position. So he could go. So your prediction would be Basham and, and Curse. Curse. That would be my would be the guess. two moves to allow. And I don't know that. That's just that, that's my, just speculation. Yeah, that's my speculation. And and that would allow Cooper Rush to be signed to the fifty three and one of the. And I would imagine three, the kicker. The kicker because the Brett kicker Mar eventually, eventually he's going to have to. So you might right? as well. Right, and then you would elevate Will Greer as your backup quarterback, mm -hmm. and then one of the 
uh, offensive linemen from the practice squad. And those possibilities are? Well, there's three you, of them. You need, you need someone who can provide the depth in, as an interior offensive lineman. Right. So uh, Alec Lindstrom is a center. Uh, Aviante Collins is a tackle. Uh, Dakota Shepley has played both guard and center in the CFL. So to and me, he actually and he also was with Seattle last year, I think. Yes, he got he He's played in some, some NFL games right. uh, as a backup right. with Seattle last year. So. But he hasn't I, been here. He's only been with the team for two weeks. I would think the most important thing is someone that can play center, because so Lindstrom would be that guy. Maybe, yeah, because you could rookie at Boston College. You could tell one of the tackles that aren't playing either ball or well, let's go. Okay, you got to go in and play guard, but you can't tell somebody. Okay, you got to go in and play center, mm-hmm. right? So. So somewhere in there, yeah, one of those guys has to be elevated this week. Uh, and, 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 and to your point with, uh, with McGovern, it's a high ankle sprain, but they keep talking about how he's improving, getting better, so maybe he can get back within that four-game span. So anyway, and what we did not mention was Jason Peters in that, and so he would not be a candidate. Yes, he's not ready. He's next, not ready next week. And, and uh, Gallup's not Ga- ready. Gallup's not ready either. And the right. big thing on Gallup uh, is, I mean, we saw what happened. Aside from where he is right now, but they also want to uh, proceed on the side of caution with that. We saw what happened with Chris Godwin when he came back from his ACL, and his surgery, by the way, was a month before Gallup's was. And we saw that, no, he didn't tear his ACL again, but he suffered a hamstring injury exactly. early in that game against the Cowboys. And now he's out for a prolonged period with a hamstring. I would think the earliest that um, Gallup is back is maybe next week. At least this week he did some practice in pads. Uh, he was in team uh, seven on seven the day before Wednesday. Thursday he got in a little team. So you would imagine he's going to get another week in pads. And it might be, okay, now we got two weeks uh, in pads. Now you prepare for the following game, right? So one of these next two games, I think he, he should be back. And he was running well, but again, it's the same thing. You haven't done anything. You haven't gone through training camp and pulling you know, soft tissue ish, uh, injuries come up, the hamstring of Godwin. Uh, so you got to get back into used to playing football because a lot of times when you're when you're rehabbing, you're, all, all the things you do are kind of premeditated steps. You know when they do the resistant cords, when they do the lunges, those are all things you're used to doing. Well, when you play football, it's not what you're used to doing, and you got to get used to it again. So. Uh, but he's close, so that'll that'll be a, a bonus for this team. So, and, and I think on any of them, you want them to be in the mindset as the week begins that okay, I'm playing this week. Right. You know. Right. Exactly. And 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 you know, and that that too uh, will help Cooper Rush this week, and we'll get into him uh, later. But he knows he's starting. Right. He's not coming off the bench. So he's going to get all the snaps in practice. Go ahead. I'm laughing because there's an example of that. What's that? The Chargers game last oh, night. Oh, yeah. Okay, Herbert, Chase Herbert Herbert gets hurt late in that game. And so Chase Daniel goes in for one play and hands off. Right. All I could think of, okay, it was a short week, okay, <laughs> for the for the Chargers. He's got nothing. Uh, but, okay, it's a short week for the Chargers – and he was on the NFL Network on Monday night oh, that's anal- right. analyzing the, uh, Seah- <laughs> the Seahawks-Broncos game until midnight or whatever time he was there. Uh, I mean, it was – well, on the West Coast, he was there until 10 o'clock. He wasn't studying the game plan for the Chiefs on a short week on Monday night. And here he gets thrust into the game that in- – they're going to try to win the game with Chase Daniel, who was on the NFL Network as an analyst just two nights ago. And so they let ago. him go in, that's hand right. off, <laughs> allow – L. Michaels to point out, by the way, 
He mm. went to college right <laughs> up the road at University of Missouri, <laughs> and then here comes here comes. But the point the point Herbert. is yeah. the point is no, not he didn't go into the yeah. week no. thinking that he's playing this week. No, now not he probably at all. should have. I mean, but but you know, but they don't he get thirty five years old. He, he'll right. run the it maybe runs the practice squad. Yeah, right. And it wasn't like they practiced it a lot last week anyway. But from a mental standpoint, and even anyway. you know, and in Cooper Rush. He doesn't get any snaps during the week. Dak <laughs> takes them all, right? What he runs is the practice squad. Um, and and so, uh, I mean, the scout team, I mean, the practice squad. Uh, and, and so now this week he gets everything. So now you're more prepared than just coming off the bench. Okay, uh, Producer Supreme, are you there? I am here. Do we have phone lines open? They're open. They are open. Oh, that's not eight, a good eight. sign. <laughs> <laughs> now, Kevin is clamoring for phone lines to be open. They have been open. And okay. he didn't call. All right. Okay. So, Someone did call. Maybe, this is kind of funny. Uh-huh. Someone did call. I was like, is this the Jesse Holly show? <laughs> so no, Jesse starts at 1 o'clock. Okay, call back. Good. All right. So that gives me time to tell my YouTube story. Um, so yesterday... Killing time prior to uh, taping the Mike McCarthy show, which you can see on CBS 11 locally, and you can also see on DallasCowboys.com, snippets of it, however they post it. Uh, anyway, it's I'm killing time, and so I'm thinking, Trayvon Diggs versus Jamar Chase. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Huh. They played against each other in college. You found a college game? I think I'll go back and look at Alabama versus Alabama versus LSU 2019, which, of course, was LSU's national championship season. Joe Burrow at uh, quarterback uh, for LSU against Tua in Alabama. And uh, Jamar Chase did score a touchdown playing against Trayvon in that game. Uh, Trayvon had his moments as well. But uh, it was it was interesting going back and looking at that, that game. But the most interesting thing about that – Oh my God! <laughs> Unbelievable, and you knew there's first round pet draft picks on both sides in that game, right? But to go back now, four years later, and take or three years later, and take a look at who was on the LSU and Alabama team in 2019. And by the way, LSU won that game 46 to 41. Um, in fact. Burrow leads him down, LSU down, and with a minute 30 left, he was 39-34. They score a touchdown to go up uh, 46-34. First play, Alabama gets the ball back to a fly route down the left sideline to Devontae Smith. And with 123 left, it's now 46-41. And, but anyway. So you counted up the guys All right, in that so game. So for LSU in that game. You had Joe Burrow at quarterback. You had Jamar Chase at wide receiver. Justin Jefferson at wide receiver. Terrace Marshall at wide receiver. Clyde Edwards-Hilaire at running back. Patrick Queen was at linebacker. Derek Stingley was at cornerback. Kayla Von Chason was a pass rusher, had three and a half sacks in that game. Those are this, That was the number that I had time to list on Twitter, or room to list on Twitter. There were more than that. For Alabama, you had Tua at quarterback, Devontae Smith at wide receiver, Jerry Judy, Jalen Waddell, Henry Ruggs, Najee Harris was the running back, Trayvon Diggs at cornerback, Xavier McKinney at safety, Patrick Sertan was at cornerback too. <laughs> <laughs> Those are just the what I had in room to list on Twitter. That doesn't get into the offensive linemen like Landon Dickerson and um, or Evan Neal probably was a freshman on that team. Um, so anyway, it was amazing going back. There's 17 minutes of pure Gold. If you just pull it up on YouTube, Al- and I tweeted it out. Alabama and LSU I'll from have 2019. To go look for it. And speaking of gold, Nate Newton's here. Who just walked in? Nate Newton. Oh, man, glad to have you. Glad to be with you guys, man. Thank you for letting me come on again. Hey, do you want to hear a phone call? Yes, sir. I can listen to any phone call you need. Kevin in Canton, Ohio, is here on Mix Shots. Hello, Kevin. Hi, guys. Uh, I figured I'd need to call in since I was the one that texted Bill. That's to right. Get this thing rolling. <laughs> hey, uh, just a real quick on this game. You know, I know everyone's got their opinion about running the ball, passing the ball, and all that stuff. 
I think it's going to come down real simple. Is our young offensive line hold up to their defensive line? If we can protect, um, we have an opportunity here. I mean, we can't expect miracles on Cooper Rush. You know, he proved to us in the Minnesota game he did real well, and, and we got a win out of that game. I do believe, though, we need to slow it down. Um, if that's um, about running the football more, or just taking little shots in the, in the flat, then so be it. Um, and I think my only concern I have is, is my buddy Kellen Moore over there staying with that, that kind of game plan and not getting excited and um, going. Const- I do believe that we need to go deep. Um, I do believe we need to take a shot, a safe shot, something closer to the out of bounds where only our receiver can get it. Maybe an INT. We do have a uh, Ozzy over there, so we might get lucky. Maybe he'll give us one. All right, guys, I'll back off and listen to your conversation. Have a great day. Thanks again. All right. Appreciate it. Sounds like he was listening to us. There you go. <laughs> Nate, offensive line versus their defensive line. What do you think? They have a very good uh, stable defensive line. You know, uh, uh, what is DJ Reader? Is mm-hmm. I got that right? Or is it you DJ did. Reader? DJ. They got DJ yeah, and BJ. And BJ yeah, one is a heel and uh, one is a reader. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> and, uh, and both of them are big, so you got to read up a big old heel. There, so. <laughs> but I, I am telling you, what we have to do is just be technique sound because they are technique sound. You can't, uh, you're not going to fool them with a lot of misdirection things. They stay home, they play their gaps, uh, they're special. They got nice linebackers, you know, and so, uh, and so what we have to do is just continue to play ball and be strong. And I'm, I'm all, everybody join in, you're four years too late with this running game and developing it. Join in. Uh, me and Mick, we go gently go back and forth, mm-hmm. get you a pass blocking tight end. But Mick told me that was the left guard, okay? <laughs> that, 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 that don't work. And Mick says no tight ends out there. I beg to differ. It's just do you want one of them on your roster? Mm-hmm. Uh, get into the running game, but don't waste plays. I said it last week and I said it this week. Double reverse is not a play. Triple reverse is not a play. But going down the seam with number nine, that is a play. And you do that. Jimmy used to believe it, when we had the kid out of Auburn, fast, fast guy. Alexander Wright. Alexander Wright, yeah. He'd say, you know what? Once a game I need to see him either dragging across the field deep, wide open, or going straight. Waste the play that way where it affects the secondary. You, you're not affecting the secondary with tripling and with the reverses. Uh, I don't care how you run the ball, but I, I'll give you a suggestion. Since our offensive line couldn't block twists and stunts last week, how about let, letting them come at us again like that and getting a quick screen? Uh, uh, getting a screen to Pollard, or getting a screen to Zeke. I mean, that is a, that is a run. Mm-hmm. That is that is a long handle run. I ain't talking about just hey man, let's just go up in there and then knock they knock their heads off. It don't work. They'll set the box. But but let them think they're getting the best of us. A lead draw, you know. Mm-hmm. So our guys can move in there, and take more, take their momentum. It's more ways than one to skin a cat. Gonna you get, just got to do it. We're gonna walk Nate down the hallway. There you go. Yeah, it's more ways. To skin, oh, they, you know. they listen. They're listening. <laughs> no, and, and and see, and he said the same thing about the, the throwing it deep. And I remember when yeah. uh, Alexander Wright was there, and somebody said something. And I remember asking Jimmy. I said, "Yeah, well, why would you waste a play? He, he doesn't catch the ball." And he goes, "But what if he does? does. <laughs> yes. What if he does?" And he goes, "And those and guys have to cover him. Those yeah. guys don't know when he just might." Catch it. That's right. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so it's a weapon, but at least you put it in their head, right? Oh, we got to be aware of this. And, and I, I'm with you on that. And we, number nine can catch the ball. No, we yes, we're not going to say his name because we don't yeah. want the, the secret out of the bag. Yeah. But number yeah. nine can, because we he know tastes bad if he catches it too. He tastes real bad uh-huh. if he catches <laughs> it. That's, that's right. Uh, it, Bill, Mick, uh, we, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We just have to. Uh, Acts that our offensive line perform. Our offensive line, uh, you put four or five different guys together last week that never really played together more than a week of practice, you know, this week. Not last week, but this week. So now you 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 ask for this offensive line to be clean on their twists and stunts because that's that's what they're gonna do to us. Even though Cincinnati is not a big twisting and blitzing team, they're gonna do it because they saw success last week so what we have to do is be patient uh but we're gonna have to still throw the ball 
I don't care what you do, you still gonna have to throw the ball. So now we gotta we gotta we gotta hope that uh Michael Gallup come back. I mean, practice him and that's all right and all good. But next, you, you're next. taking reps away from some, one of these young guys that could no. be actually doing next, something. Not till next. Week. Okay, well get him out the way. And <laughs> I'm, I'm being honest. Get I'm, him out the way. Right, yeah. right about now. Well, you don't know if he he might be getting reps with the second team. Yeah, but you know what? You got to get him ready though. Tr- trust me, get him ready next week. Mm-hmm. Trust me. At this point in time, you have no one that has had live bullet reps. They need more, and and the more they get, the better they'll get. All right, we continue with more mixed shots in just a moment. Mixed shots! Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I'm a broken traffic light. Stop and go is the name of my game. It's easy. You go, they go. What was it? They go, you go? (laughs) And if you have the wrong car insurance, these repair costs could stop you in your tracks. So get Allstate's new low auto rate and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Not available in every state, based on coverage and limits selected. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. In most states, prices vary based on how you buy. Allstate Bar and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. We paid how much for those lessons? Shh, she's doing great. Oh yeah, totally. Uh, Can you pass me a Pepsi Zero Sugar? (sighs) Great job, honey! Oh. Oh, look at that. That's not the end. No way. Now it's time for the encore. You know what? You're right. Five times? Not enough times. For everyone who traded in rock concerts for their kids' recitals, you've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. That's what I like. (sighs) The Medal of Honor is our country's highest military award for valor in combat. More than 40 million individuals have served in the armed forces since the Civil War. Fewer than 4,000 have received the Medal of Honor. The National Medal of Honor Museum will be a place to preserve these legacies and inspire America. It's being built right next door to the Dallas Cowboys in Texas. Help us honor our country's greatest heroes. Learn more and get involved at mohmuseum.org. Brace yourself for an existential question. Has your butt been having enough fun lately? Have you been treating it well? Has it been going places? If not, then it's about time you start using SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the best way to get your butt tickets to live events. Just ask the thousands of other butts who have rated it the number one ticketing app. So what are you waiting for? Download the app now or visit SeatGeek.com to get tickets to sports, concerts, and live events and make your butt happy. SeatGeek, get your seat in a seat. Back, back, back. to mixed shots. Are you a Cowboy fan who spices up the game? Nominate yourself or a friend to be the Cowboys Fan of the Year presented by Captain Morgan and win a trip to Super Bowl 57 in Arizona. Nominate yourself or a friend at DallasCowboys.com slash Fan of the Year. Wow. You going to nominate yourself? Uh, no, no, but I am a, one of the Cowboys <laughs> disillusional fans. I believe that. <laughs> Dis- we can, disillusional we can, fans. Well, yes, I am because I sit here and I break That's down That's a great film. word. Yeah. They're, the, uh, they're delusional break, and dis- disillusional. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're disillusioned and delusional. Yeah. Whatever you have, Bill, you went, you went to school and really studied. I went to school and just played around. I love uh, it. <laughs> You know, I lost my train. <laughs> that was too good a word. I was going to set you up for your stat of the week. My stat of the year. The year. The, my stat of, wow, did you believe this? And when is the last time this happened? And I don't even know. When is the last time the Cowboys had no red zone threats? Oh, yeah. No. Oh. I, I, I don't even know. I'm not looking it up because – the d- disillusional fan <laughs> refuses to believe that we have never had that happen to us before. Did no- we have any against Indianapolis in the shutout loss a couple of years ago, in that December game? Yeah, is it like 24 to, to nothing? You have to look that up. That, that's what I'm up. saying. Don't even waste your time. That was just a wild stat because I was talking to my beautiful bride, Michelle, and I'm like, she's like, hey, we – we, we, we got the field goal. We, we threatened them in the red zone. I said, no, baby, that was outside the red zone. Uh, red zone is 20 and in. Another candidate would be October 25th, 2020 at Washington, a 25-3 to okay. loss. Okay. So, <laughs> but uh, anyway, I, we, we can get on something 2009 better, at Minnesota, the 34-3 to playoff loss. We can get on to something better. <laughs> but, you know, I, I just believe that uh, we as a team, as a Cowboy team, uh, 
I know, you know, y'all can tell Dak I said this, and it, it's fine. But if I'm Coach McCarthy, if I'm Kellum, it's all about Cooper right now. I, I really don't want to – it comes a point where you quit discussing the quarterback that's hurt, and you start to – building momentum for the quarterback that's there. When you go out to practice, you know, Dak showed up to practice. Okay, wow. But can he help us on Sunday? No, can and he hold the football? Yeah. And so <clears throat> that that is what I admired about Coach Landry. That is what I admired about uh, Coach uh, Johnson. Okay, you had your three days of, oh, woe was me. Now we finna do this thing on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to get this Cooper Rush going. And so now I'm not saying that they haven't done that in their locker rooms, but that is what you need to do right now because you're going to have to galvanize yourself more than you ever had going forward. So to uh, uh, piggyback on picks. your staff, I see that. Uh, <laughs> their, their furthest penetration was the first possession, uh -huh. the 32-yard line of Tampa Bay. Okay. And they only yeah. had two more that ended on Tampa Bay's side of the 50. The 41 and the 42. The, uh, Mick, I'm trying to be positive. Uh, yeah. Well, it, you we, brought up we that. We that out there. Don't, so what's don't the over-under on the deepest penetration in this game? <laughs> let's not use the word, that word. That's, that's, not, that's not a good word. The, the end zone. All right. Yeah. All right, make your pick. You already made it earlier in the show. I made it. 23-21 is Mickey's pick. That's he's right. not saying he's going to win, though. Cowboys, right? Yeah. Wow, that's great. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm down with that. I'm going to take the seven points. Yeah. Too. Yeah. You know, I, I don't do uh, Vegas, never have, uh -huh. because the league has always held that that's against right. us. Yeah. So, till recently. Uh, yeah. <laughs> till recently, you're right. <laughs> hey, but I'll I tell you, it's right here. I just think the Cowboys are going to galvanize themselves and do what's right for the for this run game and for the defense, because that's who we have to cater to as our defense. So, you know, uh, once again, the disillusional uh, Cowboy <laughs> fan, you know, I am with the Dallas Cowboys all the way. And we win this thing, man. All right, so they're not going to be disillusional at the end of the day no, on I, Sunday. I don't care what the word is and how right. I use it. If I got the definition right, we win in the game. Okay, here you go. I agree with you. Yes. What was the score last year when, when uh, Cooper Rush goes to Minnesota and wins? 20 20 to 16. Cowboys up. win 20 to 16. And who's your pick to click? I was going to take What's Demarcus to Lawrence. This? You got Demarcus Lawrence. What's the pick to click? Pick to click. Who's, who's going to star gonna, of the game? Star of the game for the Cowboys. Offensive line. They finally hold Offensive it. Offensive line. Yes, you got a, a particular player? Yes, sir. Tyra Smith, I, I need Zach for, no, no, I need for Terrence Steele to be the player that All he right. is. All right. He's better than what he showed All last right. Week. Here's my pick to click. Uh huh. Number nine is going to be in the broadcast booth on Sunday afternoon. Tony yes. Romo's yes. calling the game. Yes, so yes. you know who's Number going to nine. star. Second game he played for the Cowboys in the preseason. What number nine do? Two returns. He had for a kickoff touchdown. return and a punt return for touchdown. So your pick to click is number nine. nine. Gavant. Oh, I can't say his name because we can't let the cat yeah, out of the bag. Man, we, hey. Number nine. So you're, so you're gonna, going with steel too, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to die on that vine that I died on last week. Uh, that's uh, hey, it's second game. Oh, he, okay. he had to he had to get one game, get just get settled in now. Now, number can, nine. And I'm going to tell you this. With number nine in the booth, snaps. and Jim and Nance is going to have something corny to say about it. And right quick, <laughs> please do not rap before the half. Bring the ball out and get this kid killed, and then y'all don't throw at least a hail mary. Y'all just take a knee. <laughs> Dude took a worthless yeah. shot, man. I, I'm uh, I'm all for just taking him off kickoff team. Yeah, boy, make, that make, was ugly. Make, make it punt returns and part of the offense. Okay. Yes, sir. He doesn't right. need to take any hits on the kickoff return. All right, because they don't return them anyway. <laughs> all right. So we will talk at you again on Monday at high Hit noon. The click. Victory. Wow. Victory Monday. Right there you go. Disillusion go. is the word of the day. Let's look it up. <laughs> <laughs> Go Cowboys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!